All right, to synthesize iron sulfate, we're gonna need iron as one of our main ingredients. First thing I'm gonna do is find a mass of my 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. That mass is 69.77 grams. To that flask, I need to add about three grams of iron. So I'm gonna put my weigh boat on my balance. I'm gonna hit the zero button so that now it considers this to be the zero weight of the scale. And I'm gonna add my iron metal until it's about three grams. And notice I'm tapping on the side of the bottle. This is a good way to pour out just a little at a time. But I'm not being very careful and I've overshot and that's fine. Now I'm not writing this number down because here's the thing, this powder is pretty fine. And when I transfer it into the Erlenmeyer flask, a little is gonna be left behind. I don't want to know how much is in this dish. I want to know how much is in the Erlenmeyer flask. So I'll transfer my iron. We can see that there's a little bit left behind, but that's fine. I'm going to re-zero my balance and find the new mass of the Erlenmeyer flask and the iron that's in it. My new mass is 72.91 grams. Without a calculator, I can tell I got pretty close to the three grams I was supposed to have. My next step in making iron sulfate is gonna to be to add the sulfate. All right, my flask has my iron and it needs my sulfate. I'm gonna add sulfate in the form of three molar sulfuric acid. You don't know what this three molar means yet, but that's fine, you will by the time the course is over. I'm supposed to add 25 milliliters. So I'm gonna pour this into my graduated cylinder Looks like I did pretty well. I'm gonna bring my graduated cylinder up to eye level. Looks like what I have in here is actually 25.8 milliliters, but that extra 0.8 is gonna be fine. I'm gonna add this to my iron. Swirl a little to mix. And then I'm gonna set it back in the back here. We're gonna make some fairly stinky sulfur containing compounds as this reaction happens, and I don't wanna smell them. This is less a safety concern than it is a comfort concern, if we're being honest. The next thing I'm going to need to do is create a hot water bath because this reaction needs some heat to happen at a reasonable rate. Your lab manual tells you to use a Bunsen burner to heat the water, but since it's just me in here, I'm going to go ahead and use the hot plate. I'm going to check. Yep, that is getting warm, so we're going to leave that until it comes to a boil. All right, we have our boiling water. I didn't show you me carrying it over, but I think you could figure out what happened there. I'm going to put my Erlenmeyer flask inside my water bath. And I'm going to scoot it back to the back and let that react for a little while. I'm getting my iron out of the hood. What a mess it has made. This is such a, such a gross reaction, isn't it? Look at that. Iron gunk all over the place. I'm going to have a cleanup job to do when we're through here. Now, what I need is the iron sulfate that's dissolved in this liquid down here. To get that out, I'm going to have to get rid of that iron gunk that's still there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gravity filter this. Gravity filtration means what it sounds like it means, using gravity to pull the solution through the filter paper. The thing that I want here is in the liquid. I'm getting rid of the impurities that are the solid dissolved in it. All right, we'll come back and check on that in a few minutes. All right, so our gravity filtration is looking good up here in the filter. We don't really see any liquid left and I haven't seen a drip in a little while. So we're gonna call this good enough. And if you see down here in the bottom, we can see some crystals. That is our iron sulfate. But we'd really like to make more than that. To decrease the solubility of iron sulfate, we're gonna decrease the temperature of the solution. So we're gonna put our Erlenmeyer flask into our ice bath and let it sit here for a little while to get as many crystals out of there as we can. All right, so look at all these gorgeous crystals that we have coming out of our ice bath. I'm gonna put this 
test tube, which has some ethanol in it, into my ice to let it start chilling. I'm going to filter again, and I'm filtering for a different reason. Last time I had impurities that were solid, and I was trying to get my liquid by itself. Now the impurities are in the liquid, and I want the solid by itself. I'm also going to use a different filter apparatus. This is a su suction filtration apparatus. It is so much faster and easier than a gravity filtration apparatus. And we can do that because we have house vac here in the LSUS labs, which is pretty terrific. If you can hear that hissing sound, air is being pulled through this. So I'm going to swirl this around, try to get the solid sort of in the solution, and I'm going to pour it into here as quickly as I can. You want to lift this? Now, not very much solid came out. It's all stuck in the bottom of my filter. So I'm going to use a plastic scoop to scrape this out of here onto my filter paper. I could use more water to help rinse this out and carry it, but this iron sulfate is fairly water soluble. So the more water I put on it, the less of my final product I'm going to have. And we'd always like a nice big percent yield, right? A nice big number of grams that we make divided by grams that we theoretically could have made. I also want to be sure that I have plenty of this product because I know what I'm going to do for lab tomorrow. All right, there reaches a point of diminishing returns where your effort isn't going to get a whole lot more solid out. So we're going to tap this to kind of help it dry, but to help rinse off more of the water. We're going to do sort of the same trick. If you remember we did last week with the copper coils, we used an organic solvent that was not water to help dry the solution. To do this trick, I'm going to turn the vacuum off. And then remember that ethanol that I was getting cold over here? I'm going to pour some of that over my crystals. I'm going to kind of poke them around a little bit. This will help rinse off any water that's still on the crystals. And then I'll turn the vacuum back on. Which will pull the ethanol through. Theoretically. What's your problem here, buddy? I'm sort of chopping this up with the spatula a little bit to let any liquid that's on get pulled through more effectively. All right, so a lot of the water is off of here now, but we'd really like to let this dry until tomorrow. So I'm going to turn off the vacuum, and then I'm going to put my crystals out on a piece of filter paper you'll see here. I pre-weighed the filter paper. You're not going to see me do that, but I think you trust me that I can put a piece of paper on a balance and find its mass. So I'm going to scrape these crystals out. My little filter paper oh, may not come with me. If so, I was going to pick it out of there. So I'm scraping most of these crystals out here because, again, I'd like a good yield, but I know for a fact I won't get all of them, right? We can see that there's some left in here, and even though I'm going to try to get a little bit more out of there, I will not succeed in getting all of it. All of these are reasons why our percent yield at the end is going to be less than 100%. All right. So I'll spread the crystals out a little bit to help make it easier for them to dry. You can tell from the way the filter paper is darker here that they weren't completely dry when I put them down. So I'm not even going to bother to get a final weight today. We'll wait until tomorrow 
when they'll actually be dry because all of this ethanol will have had a chance to evaporate. All right, so that's the end of the iron sulfate synthesis lab. If you're feeling like we don't have a lot to do calculations with, you're right. You're going to take the mass of iron that we started with. You'll do two calculations to figure out how much iron sulfate hydrate we could make. You have to do the calculation twice because we're not sure yet which iron sulfate we made. The lab manual has the notes about what the formulas are for the different compounds and how many waters of hydration each of those two iron sulfate compounds have in them. You're going to do two separate calculations to figure out how much of the hydrate you could make, as first assuming we make the iron 2 sulfate, then assuming we make the iron 3 sulfate. Those calculations, though, are not going to give us enough information to figure out which of the two iron sulfates we made. That's why the next lab we'll do, we'll dehydrate the two samples and figure out how many waters of hydration they create. That's what will finally tell us which iron sulfate hydrate we made. If you have any questions, send me an email.